but Friday is going to be the really hard day, I think. So get as close as possible to the Pennines tomorrow night and then basically hit the first thing Friday. So hence, I want an early start. I will say good night. See you in the morning. Good morning. It's just gone 5 a.m. on Thursday, the 20th of June. It's the solstice today, or should I say tonight, 9.50 p.m. tonight. I just looked it up. It's, it's a lovely morning. Sun's just risen over there. And I've decided to get up early and be on the road early. I'm not going to bother with breakfast. I'll pick something up on the go. I am boiling some water up for the coffee, but I'll be packing everything up while I'm drinking coffee. I may have a second one. The tent's a little bit wet on the fly sheet just due to condensation. So I was looking at the overall planning last night and I'm actually fine. I'm on course on the whole route overlay, which is just under 400, about 391 in the end, I think it was. I'm on 102. So that's what, 51 miles a day I've done. Yesterday was well over 50 and the day before was well over 50 because of the mishap yesterday afternoon. <laughs> so what I'm doing today is heading up through Sunderland and I will be going under the River Tyne today through the Jarrow Tunnel. I think possibly last night, because I lost that two hours, it might have played out quite well actually because would I have wanted them to end up in an inner city at dusk looking for somewhere to camp? I did sort of think possibly head up to Whitley Bay, but that was always a little bit ambitious. It's a seaside resort, there probably would have been campsites there. Anyway, today heading north, there's a left hand turn where I'll be changing course direction, heading westwards. There's a thankful village at 140 miles, so sometime this afternoon I'll be getting there. And then at 160 miles is the start of the Pennines. So if I can get someone like about 150 miles into the route, slightly over, be at the base of the Pennines tomorrow morning, then tomorrow, Friday, will be the really big climbing day over the Pennines. And it's not like the Cotswolds where you go up and stay there. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. So tomorrow's going to be quite a hard day, I think. And then I should be on the West Coast on Saturday. So a big direction change today. Oh, last night I was just lying on the grass and there was all these swifts or swallows, whatever they are, flying over me, just in formations. It, it was just wonderful. And then I looked up and I saw this almighty spider hanging off one of those long grasses. Anyway, start of day three. Coming up to 7am and I'm all packed up, ready to go. So I washed some clothes, I bungeed them to the back of the bike. Hopefully they'll be drying today. Keep monitoring that and flipping them. Having these guy ropes is so good for loading the bike up. I won't chance it too much because the panniers are on there now, it could collapse. Just going to start setting my routes for today. So that's the whole route, thankful villages. So I can just stop that whenever. That's what I'm recording my ride on. So wherever I stop tonight, that's where the ride will end. That one I can stop and start at my leisure. It doesn't really matter. If that makes sense, so that's the navigation and that's recording the ride. And you can see I'm off course. That road along there, I need to cut across that onto the next road, only about half a mile away, it's a train coming along, and then head that way. Instead of coming, instead of retracing the way I came in last night, I'm going to go along here because I'm pretty sure there's a car park along there. So that's going to make it easier to get up onto the road. Anyway, before these guy ropes collapse, I'm going to unpeg the bike, get rid of me rubbish at the first opportunity, and day three starting. Let's get going. Within a couple of hundred yards, I'm on a track. Just for reference, this is Roy Hope Nook. That's where people would have gone down to that jetty I saw last night. Ironically, there was a, a bench around there, but I don't think it would have been a good place to camp because there wasn't really enough grass. It would have just impeded people. I'm happy with where I was. It would have been nice to have had a seat last night. Anyway, just along here, coming into a housing area, and I'll get back on tarmac.
is 8 a.m. You can see Rush Hour traffic building up. I'm just crossing the River Weir in Sunderland. Gosh, this brings back some memories from my alternative end to end. I did see a premier store when I came into the suburbs and I just stopped there, bought a sandwich for lunch, stocked up on surprise, some soft drinks, stocked up with water as well. I had quite a sugar low as well, so I had a bar of chocolate there and uh, one of these high energy drinks. I've been enjoying this, there's quite a lot of cycle lanes, bus lanes, some of it's on the road, you know, where you've got your white line segregation, other bits are on the pavement, and I've just passed the boundary for South Shields, so I'm approaching the tunnel, I think, because South Shields is where the ferry would be, so we need to go up towards that and then bear left towards Jarrah. I've just passed the entrance to Port of the Tyne. And all this traffic is being signposted for the Tyne Tunnel. I'm on this side of the carriageway on a Sustrans route, and I've just seen my first sign for the pedestrian and cycle tunnel to Jarrow. Just had some really nice cycle paths alongside a busy road heading into the Tyne Tunnel that way. We've just been turned off to the right heading this way. It's very well signposted. In fact, my Garmin was sending me off to the right further back there. And I thought, no, the signposts are just so good. It's clearly a uh, purpose made cycle route, this. So I overrode the Garmin. And so far, so good. We've been sent off right well away from the road time tunnel. As you can see, it's very well signposted. I saw that big upright cone and I thought, I wonder if that's an artwork or possibly some sort of infrastructure to do with the tunnels, like sort of ventilation shaft or something. But I don't know, but there's another one over there. So who knows, it may be. I've just seen like a slope with lots of traffic going up there. So I think the time just must be right underneath here, actually, because that's probably the emergence of the road tunnel. And these could well be shafts either side. So I think we're about to drop down quite soon. Now it is, ladies and gentlemen, the River Tyne. We've just been signposted along here, so it must be somewhere back there. See all the traffic that's just emerged coming up. I've driven through it before years ago. I don't know if there's a toll whether you have to pay or anything. I'm quite happy to, but let's go and see what it's all about. Big circular building there. Oh, that guy's just gone down there. So I think we're about to go under. Ah, yeah. I've, I've recognized the colors. So I've seen pictures of it and that very lime green. So I was pretty sure that's the entrance or the exit. I think I'll just follow that guy because he must be going over the other side. Ah, that's the exit coming over. Ah, oh, I see, lift to tunnel. Very much like a elevator at a railway station. Here we are ladies and gentlemen. I'm just about to cycle underneath the River Tyne. I've just got the lift down from Jarrow and it brings you into this area. And you can see cyclists that side, pedestrians that side. I've seen pictures of this. It's got that very austere sort of post-war feel to it, really. What I always call mock art deco. I'm just so looking forward to it. There's a slight slope down on it. I don't even know how long it is, actually. So let's go and find out.
And here we are at the other end. Escalator's not working, but the funicular is. Then same as before, I guess, reverse. Go through there, get the lift up. I saw on this cycle path, sign saying time ferry two miles. Now remember, I got that over to Norway oh, years ago. And I've just seen a couple of cycle tourists and I just, they, they didn't look English. You can just tell by the different types of kit and the bikes and everything. I wonder where they've just come from, Scandinavia, presumably. Okay, this is really nice actually. You're following the course from an old railway, but as often happens, the uh, road's been built on it, so we've got to navigate around this big roundabout by the foot. After 20 miles of urban cycling, we're just about to leave that and enter some countryside. And I saw a church here, it's 20 past 11, and I thought it'd be great if I could just sit here, have a bit of early lunch, go in the church, charge my devices. Um, just I've dried, I've washed some clothes, I could put them out, you know, to dry in the sun, but unfortunately it's locked. But that's what I'm going to be looking out for, somewhere to charge my devices and eat my lunch. But I've just seen this, the Hartley Pit disaster of 16th of January, 1862. 204 lives lost. And it said the weight of the beam and the resultant debris trapped 199 men and boys almost an entire generation of husbands and sons from the local community alongside 43 pit ponies over 100 meters below the surface no way out I, I just can't think of anything more terrifying than that so uh just off my cap spend a minute to just pay respect I was just dropping down off that hillside from the church, got a Garmin alarm, I suddenly realised, oh no, I should have gone up that track. I thought, please, no more of what I had yesterday. And it's put me on to, well, this looks like an old railway line, so we shall see. Guess who's just got wet feet? <laughs> Not that bad, just one of them. A little bit. Midday update. After all that rough stuff, it brought me out on a really busy roundabout and it tried to send me up the A19 again, but the wrong, wrong carriageway. Uh, I came out in a cold sweat then. I had to enter the correct carriageway, ride about a quarter of a mile, just pull up onto a roundabout and get my bearings. And there's this road I'm on now, running right parallel to it, and it's going in the right direction. And um, Ride with GPS is normally so good at doing this, but for some reason it, it's been trying to route me on the A19. Not quite sure what's happened there, but I've just zoomed up my route to make sure I'm definitely heading in the right direction. And I just noticed a little loop for my thankful villages within five or six miles so I think that's what I'm going to do press on have a late lunch hopefully find the church hopefully fly, find the slate plaque and hopefully find a plug right going to press on to Meldon I think it's gone 1 30 and it's getting very very hot I've just been dying for a, a churchyard and some shelter I'm not even sure how far I am. I'm now on 37 miles and it should be around about 38, but you know, that's just back of the fag packet calculation. Plus what I did a little bit of extra this morning. Um, I came up past this church and I thought I've got to come in here and have a look. Look what we've got. There's seats there. I can find one in the shade, even there. But look what's inside. even a tap pretty sure there's gonna be plugs in there so I'm gonna just plug my phone in quickly give that about an hour's charge and have my lunch here then I'll put Google Maps on actually and see exactly where I am how far I am from Melbourne so I've got my phone charging it was down to 7% giving the 10,000 milliamp hour power pack an hour's charge that I depleted last night I've got the 20,000 milliamp hour but uh, you know, I want to keep that for 
later in the week, you know, I suppose it is later in the week, isn't it, it's a serious day, but every opportunity, it just makes sense to top the phone up through a plug main socket, because that's what really drains the batteries. Gosh, look at that wonderful screen going into the chancel. Lovely place, so cool in here. I've put all my washing out on the seat in the sun, but it's too hot to sit out there. I've sat, I bought my bike in here as well. Just a lovely breeze coming through. I've just had a nice little bit of a strip wash in there as well. I mean, this is absolutely, I'm reluctant to use this word, but this is actually a godsend. And I could top my water bottles up as well because they were, the front one was getting a bit, little bit low. So, yeah, what a find. Just signed the visitor's book. The last person was two days ago, the 18th of June, from Perth, Australia. It's amazing. <laughs> that is so common in churches. You've just got to scroll up, you know, half a page, sometimes turn over Canada, Australia, New Zealand. There's my things charging there. The phone's up to 17% already. That's good. Wow, look at this. Walk down the nave. Quite a low pulpit, isn't it? Stone platform. That wonderful screen. And up the step, the chancel. It's almost like walking into another room. And up another step towards the altar as well. Just look at that weird off at the back. Wow. The craftsmanship is absolutely stunning. That's been carved into stone. Wow. Look at the detail. Then the three windows, probably representative of the Holy Trinity. Looking back, a little chapel in there, but look for it. Oh, look, the door to the chapter's open. There's a wire gate to keep the swallows and the birds out. Just look at the carving. Just the, the, the craftsmanship is just stunning in churches. It really, really is. You didn't get that damn being q So I've been trying to teach myself from experts about how to read the church. One of the things I became aware of was the ecclesiastical arch is representative of hands praying. And quite often the columns, the pillars, symbolise the old trees in the glades because quite often churches were built where people used to worship and that's what they would have worshipped. So continuity. Looks like there's possibly some wall painting up there, look. Bell tower there behind that front. Let's look at the carving on the door. Can I get in there? No. That's what I was looking for. Donations. I'll go and get something. Okay, now I've got my phone charged. I've been able to do a good little bit of revision. So we are there, Walton, and there's more path up there. You can see it's a bit of a dog leg up, and then back down that way. So that's what about three miles, two, two two and a half miles. And then what I'm going to try and do is after I've been there, I mean it's going to be four o'clock by then, isn't it? Just ride into the evening and see if I can just accumulate some distance so you can see if that's the start of the Pennines. So that would be what, around about the 100 mile mark. And if that's what, 74, 84, 94, I'd be sort of quite happy to be somewhere on that river maybe who knows there might be a bit of wild camp in there so 
mental note to myself. After the thankful village, probably about 20 miles to go, a bit less maybe. Well, just leaving St Mary Magdalene's Church at Walton. So I've got my bearings, I got to the top, there's a T-junction, I turn left and then right. And it's about two and a half, three miles to my next thankful village. And then about another 20 miles after that, I'll just see where I end up. But that was so welcome. The shade, the water, just so I could keep drinking without having to sort of think I had to ration it. Somewhere nice to sort of sit and eat my lunch. That sun bleached seat where I could dry my clothes, they're pretty much all dry. And obviously the charging the devices. Um, and also just a place to sort of sit down and sort of get my bearings in. Because I was beginning to wonder how far Meldon was actually. Um, especially after the little bit of deviation earlier on. And this one's just gone a bit mental. I, this is just giving me no information whatsoever. I'm totally reliant on the 200. And here we are, look, Meldon, two miles. Could have really done with that, <laughs> just to give me a bit of a pick-me-up. But anyway, I knew that's where it was anyway, but that's just confirmation of how far it is. Just homing in on our thankful village, and I'm just crossing over a dismantled railway. Nothing to see that side. But look over here. <laughs> That must be Morden Station, I suppose. Somebody's converted that into a lovely private residence, haven't they? So this is Meldon, a thankful village. Oh, just spotted the church. And I've just spotted the plaque. There we go, look. Wow, the lovely church. So I just passed the turn and we'll be taking later. I knew there was a bit of a dog leg up here. And I saw this seat, and then I suddenly saw the churchyard, and then I saw the plaque. So we'll pop in there and have a look in a minute. Wow. Really is nice snow. Since we entered Northumberland, it's been fantastic. Right. I will leave the poppy first, and then I'm going to go and have a look in the church. To the left of the slate plaque is a slate shield. Looks a bit newer than that. That's weathered. That would have been there 10, 11 years now. This says, erected to commemorate the centenary of the safe return of all those men who left the parish to serve in the Great War, 1914 to 1919. And this one says, Meldon, 1914, 2014, I thank for village. Now we have just hooked my poppy around the edge. Stop it blowing away, but anybody can remove that. They really don't want it there. What a lovely looking church. Looks like the porch is over there. Although the footpath is heading <laughs> this way. Imagine this is the entrance. Oh, yes, it's open. Gosh, it's very dark and quite tight to get in. Don't think I want to switch the lights on that thing. Okay. Right at the back. I noticed there were some open bells. There's one cord down, one bell rope. Might be the west window, won't it? Facing east. That looks like it was a, a north porch once upon a time. 
into this wooden screen across on the top. Look at this ceiling, slotted, slatted wood. And then once you get into chancel, look what we've got here. That's very grand, isn't it? Isn't it? Wow. And up into the altar. That ceiling is amazing. This is really nice and cool. I cannot immediately see any plug sockets, so I'm pretty glad I stopped when I did. There was just everything at that last one. It was meant to be. I'm just going through my list. So Meldon is the first one on part two. Bearing in mind we started part two yesterday morning. And then there's two as we cross the Pennines, the Hunstantonworth and Owsby. And then the final two are very close to each other on the outskirts of Morecambe. So the next two will be tomorrow. 172 and 205. Might be one tomorrow, one the following day. Depends how well tomorrow goes. So I think the idea now is to get as close to the Pennines as possible. And as I was heading that way, you can see them looming. You can see some of the classic shapes. I can't remember what they're called, but you know, the three peaks. Um, they're looming, definitely. The other day when I was riding up from Leeds, the on the right was the North Yorkshire Moors, very distinct, relatively close. You could see the Pennines in a very, very hazy distance, but no, they are looming. So. Let's go and get as close to them as possible and think about somewhere to camp. Since I've left Malden, I've been climbing steadily. You can tell you're really high up. There's flies all over me. You can just tell. Beautiful up here. Wind turbines over there. I've just passed 50 miles and I've got 112 left to do for this second stage. So I'm thinking I might put in another 12, that'll leave just 100 in two days. Take a little bit of pressure off me tomorrow. Just loving this. This isn't, this isn't even one of the big ones, it's just one of the minor little kicks before the biggies come. Just here, the breeze going through the grasses and sheep over on my right hand side. On some bird song. Just loving this. There's a sharp right hand bend and I'm being sent round to the left, no through road, so we'll see where this goes. Gosh. Beautiful up here, really enjoying this. I've had my high vis off since, well, just after I stocked up on food, but it was about, what, eight o'clock this morning, quarter to eight. I think I'm gonna have to put that on when I do the descent, because there's definitely a drop in temperature up here. When it does come, it's gonna be quite cold descending. Anyway, let's go and see where this goes. Now I've been turned down this gravel track, but I've just seen the blue arrow of right away, so that's reassuring. So it does look like you're going to go into someone's farm. And as I always think, if it's a bridleway, way, there's probably going to be gates where horses and riders can get through. So that's always reassuring. So it means I don't have to decant the panniers off the bike or try and climb all over the stars. That's the theory anyway, let's hope so. Oh, this is quite a decent method road. That wasn't much of gravel after all. I was getting ready for a long bumpy section. Oh wow, look at this. Just dropping down to, I think it's called Cowbridge or Crowbridge. 
and I'm going to see what's there. I certainly need to pick up some supplies. I probably need a little bit more food than I've got. And there may even be some camping there. If not, you can sort of see what the countryside's like. It's not going to take too much of a genius to find somewhere to put my tent up around here. But nice to actually find a little campsite. I wouldn't mind a wash and a, well, a shower and a shave, that's for sure. Anyway, to plunge down, it's about three miles to go, I think. Corbridge is really nice. There's a big festival going on, as you can see. Just come to have a look at these llamas. I'm just looking over the River Tyne, absolutely fantastic. I'm just reflecting, I cycled underneath that earlier on today, probably down that way towards Newcastle downstream. So I'm looking at possibly trying to get over there maybe if I can get gain access maybe near one of the trees just to sort of blend in a little bit get me high vis off as quick as possible <laughs> Corbridge is really really nice and if I did camp here I could get back up in the morning because there's some shops there because really we are literally about to start climbing first thing in the morning so I'm down by the river looking up at Cor Bridge and obviously <laughs> The grass is quite long. Like last night, I'm just going to have to keep going until I find somewhere that's flat-ish. So let's give it a go. Good evening from just outside Corbridge on the River Tyne. I'm just outside town, sort of camped up for the night. In fact, you may just see one of the arches of the bridge over there. I was up early this morning and made really good progress up through Sunderland over that iconic semicircular bridge across the river where... And then before I knew where I was, I was coming into South Shields, started seeing all the signs for the road, Tyne Tunnel. And then you pick up Sustrand signs for the cycle and pedestrian tunnel. And it was so easy to follow. And I have to say, it did not disappoint. It was absolutely wonderful going under there. And when I rode over that bridge about an hour ago, I thought, I just reflected, I actually cycled under that river this morning, well, a few miles up that way, I think. It's been really, really hot afternoon. So I've done my direction change. I'm no longer headed north, I've turned west. I, I've depleted the 10,000 milliamp power pack. So I'm charging that up whenever I get to a church or anywhere with a plug socket. And I'm also charging my phone up with a plug socket because that's the one thing that depletes the power packs. So I've now switched over camping to the 20,000 milliamp. So I, I'm trying to sort of like switch between the two. The thankful village was wonderful and then straight after that I just started to hit the Pennines really. It's been uphill all afternoon and the real big beasts are coming my way tomorrow. So I've done 60 miles today so I'm well up on schedule so that gives me a little bit of slack tomorrow. If it really is tough I can sort of like reduce the distance slightly. So 100 miles to go to the M5 corridor where this part of the route finishes that's where all the thankful villages will be so there'll be two on the roads over the Pennines that includes going up over Hartside Pass and then the final two are just north of Lancaster and that's where the second chunk finishes then my third file is I just want to le leisurely spend the weekend riding down the Fylde Coast all through Fleetwood, Blackpool, Lytham go into Preston and then go around to Southport and Formby before I head into Manchester for my travel lodge before coming home. So hopefully it's going to be leisurely weekend, but the next couple of days are going to be quite brutal, I think. Anyway, on tonight's menu, I've got chicken and white wine sauce with rice and I've been craving fruit all day. I've been eating fruit all day. I've got a couple of bananas for me put in. So that's it, midsummer's evening. It sounds like there's a big party going on up there, music, and I think there may even be fireworks later on. So I wish everybody a happy solstice. It's exactly 9.50, so it's the solstice. It's the longest part of our year. 
I heard all that music up in the town and I just thought that was going to go on too late, but it seems to have stopped. What I did here for about half an hour, and it's only recently just stopped, I think it's coming from that direction, was bagpipes. In the distance, you know, not close, but that was quite evocative. And I just had a look on the map and I realised I'm at the same latitude as Carlisle because I was trying to see where I'm going tomorrow and I'm slight, starting to slope downwards now. The next village is going to be in a southwestish direction and then I start dropping further south down towards Lancaster and the final two. But to be honest, I'm just so tired. I just want to get packed up and get into bed, get an early night. This isn't the best camp I've ever done. As soon as I put my tent up, I thought, I wish I'd persevered and maybe gone on a bit further, actually. But you know what it's like, once you've committed yourself, I'd walked about a quarter of a mile from the bridge. Looking up there, it just looks like there's probably some better fields, to be honest. But midsummer's night. Anyway, I'll say good night and see you in the morning.